Satellite photos of war zones are nothing new, but the imagery that we have been getting from Maxar Technologies is becoming part of the daily news coverage in a way we have not seen before. These images, for example, appear to reveal mass graves dug on the outskirts of Mariupol. Mariupol officials say the satellite photo shows something that Russian forces have tried to cover up, the deaths of thousands of civilians during the battle for the city. Other images that we've seen from Maxar Technologies show us what happened in places like Buka and Irpin and may be key to war crimes investigations to come. We're going to talk about all of that in some more detail with uh, our next guest, who's been really, as I said, the company, an invaluable resource in helping verify and discover what's happening on the ground in Ukraine. Stephen Wood is the senior director of Maxar Technologies. That is the space technology company that's been sharing those images. Images. He's the head of the News Bureau at Maxar, and he is in Aurora, Colorado this morning. Welcome to our program. Thank you. Good morning. You know, I, as I was mentioning, there have not been many days in this war on Ukraine where we haven't said in our program new satellite images from Maxar Technologies. So we do appreciate your giving us some time in busy days for you. I'm wondering, to begin, how do you see your company's role and the use of your company's satellite imagery in our covering the war on Ukraine? Yeah, first of all, Heather, I mean, we've been doing this for many, many years. And so where I think we are right now with Ukraine is it's kind of the culmination of the technology and the people and, and really the, the ability to get this information out really like we've never been able to do before. And it's, it, it feels like the, the right thing to be doing at this time, just to be able to shed some transparency on, on some pretty bad things that are happening, especially in this part of the world. When you say your technology has been used before, we've seen it in other conflicts, notably in Syria, but one of the things that struck us as standing out this time is the images have allowed us sort of to bear witness to the civilian cost of this war. Has that been a particular thrust for you or a particular goal this time? Well, it, it absolutely has been part of the thrust. Um, we, part of what we are able to do is to almost forensically show what's happening in this part of the world. You know, the way I look at it is, as you mentioned, we've done this in places like the Middle East. We've been involved with natural disasters and the response after a, an event might occur. But what stands out to me more differently with this, this particular crisis is the humanitarian side of things. So being able to actually take our imagery correlated with reports that are happening on the ground or social media or videos or photography, and then bring in the overhead perspective that helps to really co co corroborate and verify what's, what's really happening. There's been a lot of attempts to have disinformation about what's going on. And really our satellite imagery helps to verify that. It, it is a photographic record that then can be used for investigations and, and to show what's happening. So, for example, let's look at some specific examples together, if you can. I mentioned this second mass grave site near Mariupol. If we pull up those images, these are among your most recent. Again, what do we need to take away from this as your satellites have picked up? Well, and, and it, just like you were saying, too, you know, part of the, the effort has been to combat the spread of disinformation. So we were receiving reports from reporters on the ground, as well as from people that had social media in, in other interviews with the mayor, who is claiming that there, is, there are these reports of cemeteries and mass graves being established. Um, there are efforts to say that's not true, that's not verified. We could take our satellite images and actually corroborate and show over time how that area has changed. So it's another very powerful visual record to really show what's happening in an area that otherwise may be inaccessible or too dangerous or too, too remote. Our satellites are orbiting above the earth. And so we can actually monitor and see that in a way that a reporter may not be able to get to that to that spot on the ground. And, and we know, I mean, for example, in Mariupol, there are so few journalists who are on the ground now That's at right. all. It's, it's completely unsafe. But maybe we should look at the process, for example, if I'm not mistaken, it's four satellites that Maxar has flying over, That's right. over That's Ukraine. That's exactly right. Four. And mm -hmm. then why do you capture the images that you do? How do you decide? Is it is it a commission? Do you decide to take a collection? How does it work? Yeah, no, it's a great question. It, it's something we do every single day. We're trying to figure out what's the optimal set of images we collect. So we're doing that first for our customers. We have customers in the government. We have commercial customers. We yeah, work the US, with, obviously, for our, with the news not media. Our gover I guess I don't think it's our government, the U.S. Defense Department. We should be clear for no, us. But, but to be fair, it's, right. it's governments all around the world. Okay. So this, this is an area that obviously a lot of people are very focused on right now. And so the big picture, pun intended, is we are taking our, our satellites and figuring out every day 
exactly what to collect. We, we figure out about weather, if it's been very cloudy, like it has been the past week, we're gonna to try to optimize whatever we can collect. And so we keep in mind these satellites are traveling very fast over the earth and they're up at you know 600 kilometers in space. So it's, it's a snapshot in time, but we're trying to always maximize what we can collect based on the current issues of the day and what's most important for our, our, our clients and our customers. And the aspect of before and after is key. I mean, you talked about how this can counter Russian disinformation, for example, different version of events of what's happening on the ground. But the before and after tells different stories. And we see that notably, and we'll bring in these pictures during the, the theater example, I think in Mariupol, the showing the, um, the children you see written in, in Russian. We had some shots of people knowing, you know, you knew that people we knew that people were seeking shelter there uh, before. We see the children in Russian written in the letters in front of behind the theater, and yet it was attacked anyway. Yeah, that, that image in particular is one that will always stand out to me in my memory of what this crisis was all about. And when we, when we first found that, that writing on the ground, it was just so poignant to see that. And then unfortunately, the aftermath of you know, what we now know very, very clearly what happened. Um, to see that contrast, and you, you raise a very important point, it's been part of our business model from the very beginning to have that record of the earth and to go back in time and be able to see what things looked like before and what it looks like now. So Mariupol is, a, is kind of the poster child example of that, is being able to look at this beautiful city in the southern, port, in the southern part of Ukraine and what was a vibrant city you know, months ago and comparing it to what it looks like now, it, it reminds me of pictures of World War II. Mm -hmm. And just seeing the devastation, the destruction, and it's hard to imagine it being rebuilt, but that's part of what this photographic record can show you, is, is exactly what it looked like before and what it looks like now. And Buka would be a further example of that as we look at this, and of course the images are very disturbing, well, of so many of these scenes, but Buka, as we know, after that community was, was devastated. But again, the before and after, what we have been discussing is how that, that before and after aspect has allowed you and allow authorities to counter the line from Moscow that the bodies that are in civilian clothes that are in the streets were there after the Russian troops had withdrawn. That was the line from Moscow. But your images have countered that. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. Um, that, that whole story, as it, it came to us, we worked very closely with the New York Times. And it, it's exactly as you mentioned, we, we were getting videos and seeing some very graphic and disturbing photos of these bodies that were lying in the streets, just as the Russians had, had been pulling out of the area. And of course, keep in mind that this area had been inaccessible um, as it had been occupied by the Russians throughout this area. And so as the, the troops began to leave and documents and journalists were able to, to actually be able to start surfacing what was happening, our imagery, again, because it can forensically go back and we can actually detail the date and the time and the location for every single image we collect. And so it's, it's verifiable and be able to actually see, unfortunately in this case, bodies in the street that verified exactly what we were seeing with the social media videos, provided that kind of proof in the date, in the time of when this happened. How do you see your images as becoming evidentiary or part of any future war crimes investigation? Um, it, it's certainly in, uh, entirely possible that it will indeed become part of that. I mean, again, that is part of what our our imagery is, is so valuable for. It is that, that verifiable photographic record that can be used for all kinds of different purposes. We've had similar events like this in years past, whether it was uh, incidents in Darfur, in Sudan, um, across the Middle East, across in Asia, with places like Myanmar. So it, it's just yet another one of these case points of how high resolution commercial satellite imagery can, can be very helpful in, in events like this. And we're, we're proud to be able to do what we can to help. I mean, we, we've been clear and we were at the outset that this is not new, the whole notion of satellite technology and covering conflict, but much of the approach this time has been different. What do you think in terms of what Maxar Technologies has done in Ukraine will change how we cover wars in the future? I think it does. You know, I mean, to me, I, I've been doing this for more than two decades. And every event seems to be you know, more uh, historic as we go through it. This one stands out to me. Again, it's the perfect storm. It's where we have now the capabilities to get this data out faster. We've got a great partnership with the news media, with groups like yourself, 
um, that can use this data that can, can really shed light on what's happening. And I, I think this is becoming the way it is. Um, I, it, it's again, part of the use case we've always envisioned, but it really feels like we're, we're at that, that kind of nexus right now. And I see that continuing to, to increase in the future. Stephen Wood, thank you so much for the time. It's a pleasure to meet you and hear about uh, the philosophy. As I mentioned, Maxar Technologies is very much a part of our conversation every morning virtually. So I appreciate your perspective today. Thanks. You're most welcome. Thank you, Heather. Thanks.